Hey guys, welcome to the video series on BigQuery. Hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. Today we're going to talk about the views in BigQuery. What are the various views BigQuery have and the typical use case for them. So without further ado, let's start. So there are two types of views in BigQuery, standard views and materialized views. So we'll start with the standard views. Standard views are the regular views which exist in the database management systems too. So if you're coming from like a SQL background or if you have a, a bit understanding of SQL, you must be already aware about uh, views. Basically, view is a virtual table defined by a SQL query which does not occupy any space. And view is queried as pretty much as a table and the schema of the view is defined uh, by the results from the running query. In BigQuery, we can create views uh, uh, basically by two ways, using the classic DDL statement way or using the UI. And uh, we, we will explore both options. Uh, let's jump to the uh, BigQuery UI so we can see how we can create view, uh, how we can create standard views in, in there. Okay, let me go there very quickly. Yeah, so um, if you look at, at my screen, um, we are in the BigQuery UI and uh, as I mentioned, we're going to create views and if to create views, we need tables. So here we using, uh, we we have two data sets named views demos and MV demo and in views demo and MV demo both have names, uh, tables in it. So like very quickly, um, I'll show you what exactly in this uh, table is. It is basically have name, gender and the count. So count is basically how many people have that name. So it's a very simple table. Uh, I'm going to attach the link to the data and also the queries and all those stuff I'm going to use. Like I'm going to attach my GitHub link so you can explore there. But basically to start from here, like it's a simple table which have name, gender and count in it. So we'll create view on top of it. And as I mentioned, the first uh, approach will be using the classic DDL statement. So which you guys, might be already aware. So I'll, I already have uh, the query ready. So I'll copy this and explain it in my query editor on BigQuery. So if you look at this uh, query in the BigQuery, basically it is the very simple uh, statement or like it's, it's, the, it's the way we create views in other places, in other SQL or other DDM, uh, DMS systems. So basically, uh, we start with the keyword create view, then the name of the view. Uh, so here we're using view demo because uh, that that's like to specify which uh, data set we are using. Uh, so we are creating a view in views demo and the view name is mail names. And here, if you see this, uh, this thing, we passing the, uh, the variables of the view here if you don't pass it that's okay too it's like it's not necessary these parameters will uh, will be uh, the uh, the fields in the view or like the, the, that they will be the, the uh, what come whatever is the outcome come from here like name and count it will be stored in name and number so if you look at the query it's like a simple select query where you have the name then count and we are picking up from our names table and just have a one uh, filter on it of gender male and then we are ordering it so it's not a very complex uh, uh, SQL statement it's a very straightforward SQL statement but the idea here is to show you how to create a view and which is basically cre create view and the table like view name and as after that whatever query you want to use so if we do this this is like a uh, as I mentioned this is the uh, the classic way of creating views so you click on run and as soon as it's complete, we see here we have mail names. So uh, there is one thing I wanna bring to your attention. Like if you look at the icons here and here, they look pretty same, but views should be different. So if you reload this page, you will see, uh, just, just take a second and I'll show you this. If you expand this and this, and now you see, so the view have a different syntax. So when you are like, um, like if you're not creating view and let's say you got a data set, you wanna distinguish between the table, partition tables and views. So these symbols are pretty handy. Here you can, from here you can see this is a, uh, this is a view, not a table. Okay, so this is one way of creating views. Now let's look at the second way of creating view, which is basically 
uh, using the UI. So uh, we will use a different uh, query. Uh, when I say different query, uh, like a new query, which is pretty same query here. We have only one difference. The filter is different here. The gender is F. So like as soon as you put the query, what you can do, you run the query. And once the run is complete, here you see save. You click on this drop down, save view. And here you can tell, okay, in which data set you want. I pick this and we name it like female underscore names uh, underscore V. Okay. So these are the two ways how we can create views. And if you see here, like the both views exist here and this, they look, uh, the symbol or the sign in front of it also shows them the way we want. Now let's jump back to our PowerPoint. Now we need to know like when to use the standard views. So the first, uh, the first use case is basically security. When we want to have a fine grain control access with the, uh, with like specific users and uh, groups where we don't want to give them the access to the underlying table. Uh, there we want to use standard views uh, and this can be achieved using the authorized views. And I'm going to show you in a second, like how we do this. And the other thing is like when we want to hide the complexity of our uh, like of our SQL queries from the users. So basically, let's say if we we don't want to expose our users to the complex logic queries because sometimes it's hard to understand or remember all these uh, logics. And uh, in those cases, we want to use views. So if you look at the uh, the image in the uh, on the screen here, like we have three base tables. One is customer item order and uh, the join of them. Uh, like after joining and having some filter conditions, like we getting this output. So for this, instead of giving them the query, how to join and have some business logic, like instead of giving all those things, we can, we created a view and they can access the view. And in that case, they don't have to worry about like, what's the join condition, what's the filters, or is there any business logic? They need to be aware about it. So the uh, other thing I was talking about the authorized view, let's jump back to the uh, BigQuery UI and look at the authorized view. So basically with BigQuery, there is, um, uh, there is a limitation. So, uh, currently like, uh, if you have access to one data set, like you get access to everything, uh, in that data set, like tables, views, and all those things. And as I was, uh, as I'm mentioning, there is a use case where like, we don't want users to have, uh, access to underneath, uh, like underneath, uh, table. So you want to have access to them mail names table but not the names table so in that case what we can do is like we can use uh our, like the same data store in other um like in other data sets and from there we can create a view so we don't go much in detail basically what we do here we allow the view to use the data set from the other uh sorry we allow the we allow views to use the data from the other data set table. So that is authorized authoritative views. And because I have admin access, so I, um, I won't be able to show you the uh, real use case, but I'll show you how to do that. So basically, let's say if you want to allow these views to access MV demo, so we click on here, open, click sharing, authorize views. And then, so here you see, I already have one rule. I'll remove this. Uh, so let's say we want female tables to use this thing. We can add this rule. So in this way, like this, I know this view already exists and already created, but this, uh, like this view can, we can recreate it using the data sets from here. Okay. Let's go. Uh, so next is the materialized view and, uh, it's a, like a special, uh, view here. So in BigQuery, materialized views uh, that periodically cache the result of a query for increase the performance and efficiency. BigQuery then leverage the pre-computed results from materialized view and whenever possible, read delta changes from these base tables to compute the up-to-date results. I know like it's very jargon and uh, mumbo jumbo in simple word, if you want to say that. So in simple word, materialized view store uh, the query result on the desk. Okay. That's the big difference between like standard view and materialized view. So it stores the query result on the desk. And whenever there is a change in the base table, so the tables on top of which we created this 
it automatically refreshed the materialized view. So in standard view, when until we don't run the query, like until we don't query the view, uh, it won't refresh. Here, you don't have to do anything. It will automatically, uh, I think the timing is like, um, as soon as the base tables change within five minutes, materialized views get refreshed. And this is, and the purpose of this is to improve the performance. Okay, and we will, like in the end, we will discuss like what's the difference between materialized view and standard view. So you get it. But the basic idea here is, or the main difference is materialized views are stored on the desk and whenever there is a change in the base table, it automatically refresh. You can uh, still, you can like, if you want, you can manually refresh, but uh, as I mentioned, like uh, there is a window in that, like it will automatically refresh. If your requirement is like that, okay, you can't wait even for that small, such a small window, you wanna refresh it manually, you can do that too. And uh, uh, there is another thing like here, like why it is so fast, like if, the change in the base table is the append or like you can say only incremental like let's say they added only 10 rows or 100 rows so what bigquery do it leverage whatever they already have and just compute the changes or the query only on the incremental refresh so in that way they are uh, like the queries are faster and more efficient so, uh, uh, and it's very specific to BigQuery and it have like certain advantages like zero maintenance, as I mentioned, like it, um, uh, like you just created it, you don't have to worry about it. Like uh, it's not like uh, standard views where like if things change in the base table, you have to uh, be aware about it and you need to take care of it. Here, like it's automatically done and the automatic refresh. So you don't have any stale data. You don't have stale data in standard views too, but uh, as I say, until you don't run the query, you won't get it. Uh, but, uh, and the use cases, uh, metalized view, it's like, it's, it's a very new concept in BigQuery. They started a couple of years ago. So it's still, um, like it's, it, it is used in specific use cases. It's not like you can use it everywhere. So the first one is like, if you have to, um, like in your ETL, let's say this is the last step of your ETL where you aggregating the data sets there you can use it and you can you run queries uh, only on like particular set of uh, t subset of the table like you have already pre predefined filters in those cases you use materialized view and if you have a, like an inner join between a large and small table there you can use it and it can be used with like clusters and all those kind of things okay uh, sorry so uh, the other thing i want to uh, talk about is uh, the limitations of materialized view at this point. So at this point means like uh, um, at the time of this recording, like it still have like a lot of limitations. It's not like we can't use materialized view uh, with like um, all queries. So for example, if you have a having clause, it won't work. If we have left, right, or full join, it won't work. It won't work even on all aggregated functions. And with with clause, like uh, whatever, um, like it, it works with with clause, but it won't work like if you have having le left, right, and all those kind of joints in it. And the good thing about it is like it can be used with like a partition or cluster tables, so which like improve its uh, performance further. Uh, I'm just pointing out like some limitations here, but uh, there are like a bunch of them which you can uh, check out on the Google official documentations. Okay, let's very quick, let's uh, jump very quickly like to show how to create materialized view. And it is very uh, simple, not very uh, complicated. So if you look at this, create learn, go back. I'll explain this to you. Okay, let's paste here. So if you look at this, Pretty strand, like pretty similar to what the standard views DDL look like, but we have materialized view here. If you look at this, it is here, like the keyword is here. Otherwise, like it's pretty standard. So create materialized view, then the name of the view. So we are creating this view in MV demo. And as I said, like it is, it is uh, done on the aggregations. So you can see here what we're doing, we're using name and uh, we just doing the sum on their count and then group by one. So as I was mentioning, if we put like having condition here, it won't work. Like it, it will give us an error, but let me run this very quickly. And 
and you see we have the view here let me refresh this the same problem the symbol doesn't look like a view but if you refresh it and you come back again expand this this and this so you see the difference like this is the standard view symbol and this is the materialized view and if you click on the details like that's a that's one thing like if you go and click on details here you can see it's a materialized view and it's refresh enabled so like by default the refresh which i was mentioning like metra metalized views refresh automatically so it is enabled by default but if you want you can ref uh, like stop it and give you the time when it was like last refresh so you can check all those things here and if you go to standard view like if you click on details, you can see view ID when it was created and and what query was used in this view to create it. Okay, so now we know what is a materialized view, how we can create a like standard views and all those things. Now let's uh, look uh, or the uh, uh, sorry before jumping between uh, before jumping to the difference between both of them, I wanna talk about like how uh, we can create a view with the partition table. So if you look at this query, uh, this is pretty similar, like uh, we using the same create materialized view, the name of the view, and after that the partition and the clustering things we need can add. But this can be done on like partition tables and cluster tables. And uh, it it's uh, the idea of using the materialized view over, uh, or I won't say over, but like why the materialized view was introduced, the materialized view was introduced to improve the query performance and all those kinds of situations. So as we were mentioning, like if you have uh, pre-aggregated um, like uh, jobs in your ETLs or pre-filtered jobs in your ETL and inner join jobs in your ETLs, there you can use Metalize. And I said like it's a very new concept came a couple of years ago or probably a year ago or so. So it it don't have like it doesn't cover all the SQL situations like all, all SQL queries, but uh for some cases it it's, it's very handy okay so that's why like whenever you plan to use this okay now we know how to create it now but uh, uh, i i recommend to check the google documentation so you're aware and as i said like the continue like it's came early so i'm pretty sure like google is working on it and adding new stuff to it so uh keep checking the documentation who knows like um, they they have more things in it when you uh, at the time when you start using it okay so yeah. And as I mentioned, I'm going to put the link of this thing. So don't worry about this. But like the 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 idea here is like, OK, when it is partitioned by and clustering, like the rules are pretty same uh, to materialized view. But in case of partition clustering, you have we have like two extra uh, like we, we need to add partition like partition by column and the cluster by column. OK. Now let's uh, look at the difference between these two. So uh, the the last topic for today is like, what's the difference between standard and materialized view? So the first thing is like standard views. Uh, if we talk about the performance, standard views uh, does not perform that well, but materialized views are actually created to improve the performance. Uh, and um, the query support standard views um, as they as i mentioned initially like they are they exist um, they are the regular views which exist in the like other sequels or like other data warehouse cons in other data warehouses so it support pretty much everything while materialized views does not support which we talked about it like having clause can't be used at this point left right or full joints can't be used uh, some aggregation functions can't be used. Uh, standard views doesn't care about partitioning and uh, clustering, like it doesn't applicable to it in some sense, but materialized views like can leverage on it. Uh, incremental refresh, um, like standard views when we query a view, like it will going to hit the whole uh, table, not just the incremental refresh, while materialized view is designed in a way or like a, it, it cache uh, the pre-computed results and leverage it. So uh, when like uh, only an incremental happen, like it uh, leverage that pre-computed results and compute only the in those new records, not anything else. Uh, additional storage standard views, as we know, it does not 
occupy any space on disk. So there is no storage while materialized view have. This is like one other big difference. Uh, query rewrite, like there is no query rewrite, but materialized view do that. Uh, there is no cost associated with standard views while with materialized view, there is a cost associated. And data staleness, it's, it's not with, like it doesn't exist in both cases, like in standard views, as soon as the base tables get refreshed and you hit, you run your query, it, uh, it, it, it will have the new data with materialized view. It's an, um, like an automatic refresh. It's not like a, you have to run it manually. You can do that too, as we were looking into this, like we can turn off that option. Uh, but uh, by default, it's an automatic refresh. So data is never stale with standard views. It's not stale too, but we have to run it manually. Like we have to manually query the view and it will show you the fresh data. So that's all for today's video. Uh, uh, thanks for watching it and stay tuned for the 